Hi, this is Scott Moore from Northway Solutions Group, and I'm going to be going over some information with you on LoadRunner's Virtual User Generator, or VUGen for short, the scripting tool that's used for LoadRunner. I'm going to go over some general concepts in this segment. When you record your first script um, and you've not used LoadRunner very much, you haven't set a lot of your own options, this screen might represent what you might see. I've recorded a script in the HP Web Tours application, and you'll see that I have a layout that uh, starts off on the left with task. It's a workflow um, that HP's created to help lead and guide you through the automation process for, for your business process. Getting your scripts ready and prepared, enhanced, if you will, for a load test, to, to prepare them for the controller. Now these steps are obviously very high level. You're going to have to check the manual. You're going to have to learn how to do things like insert transaction timings, parameterize your data so that you're sending different data each time, correlating that data back that's going to change as you change your data that's submitted to the server. So will it change as it comes back from the server? Verifying the content on the page so that you are fully aware that you're getting back what you're supposed to in your responses from the web server. And obviously this is the web protocol that we're going over today. Um, and then you've got some items here to prepare you for load. So you could go into this workflow as you're creating your script and it will guide you. As you get more advanced with LoadRunner, um, you may not need that. So what typically more advanced users do once they're used to this process and they understand it is they sort of get rid of it because we want to maximize our screen real estate. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, also notice we're in the default view, which is the tree view. Um, we, I ca like to call this the pretty GUI view uh, because each step and the code that is represented uh, here it looks like just a, an icon. And sometimes it is easy to be in tree view, change properties for a step, um, or look at the GUI view to see what you originally recorded versus when you play back. Um, you can view it in HTML mode versus HTTP mode and see the request and the response that went to and came from the web server. So there are some good benefits um, to the tree view. Um, you also have a thumbnail view that kind of shows that business process as you recorded it and what it looked like. Notice though in tree view there are more steps than there are screens in here because we have added uh, transaction timings, right? And we've called that transaction timing login. So we're timing the form submission to log in to this website, and that's what's being timed here. Um, you can switch here between your vUser init section, your vUser in section, and your action section. Those are typically uh, the three action files, those are the default action files, if you will, that come with uh, each script. That, that's what starts it out. And then you've got a, a global.h file where, you can, uh, where you've got globals defined and you can actually um, add your, your own global variables here that can be used throughout any of these sections. Um, behind this engine is really a script view, and that's what we're going to change, change to now. We, we're going from tree view to script view, and you'll see those three action sections, the vUser init section, the action, and the vUser end. You can actually have more actions here um, than just these three. These are the three that, that are by default. vUser init and vUser end have to be there as well, uh, but you can have multiple actions and you can rename these as well. So you can make your scripts modular that way. But notice that we have code that is sitting behind here. So this is sort of a pseudo C language. It's based on C. The engine that runs inside this IDE is the Visual Slick e uh, editing engine. So uh, that's how it recognizes the uh, uh, F1 and the, and the function commands. If I hit F1, it takes me to the function reference guide here, which I can see examples of that code. Uh, what it should be in and, and so this as I'm typing out new functions the visual slick edit engine will pop up and try to assist me. Once you get used to using LoadRunner um, this is 
probably what your view is going to end up looking like. So if this, if you're a QA functional automation expert and you are used to using a GUI where you're used to right clicking on uh, items and putting in properties and clicking buttons here, um, you know, you're going to have to get kind of get used to coding. If you're a developer in test and you're used to writing code, this is not going to be a problem. Um, there is, you know, obviously I said it was C. There's some ANSI C that you can put in here to enhance your scripts, but there most of the heavy lifting uh, functions are already created. They're either created by HP that are put in there from the recording perspective or you put them in afterwards so putting in think time for example is you know it's a custom load runner function that's built into the tool so you don't have to write any C code to create that that's uh, that timing if you will supports uh, the slash star uh, method for uh, comments as well as slash slash so so this is really what you're going to end up with as you get more advanced with Loadrunner. Um, as you play back, there's, there's two main pieces, the script view and the output window where you're going to be reviewing your replay log. And as you start re getting more familiar with how to read detailed replay logs um, and, and looking at your script and figuring out how your script is affecting what you're seeing in that log, uh, the easier Loadrunner is going to be. So that's just the IDE from a, a very high level and trying to get to um, this point. And now uh, with our, our next series, we're going to go into the recording options for the web protocol.